the angel of the Lord declared to Mary, and she conceived of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins. And we apologize to God using the following prayer. I confess to oh, Almighty God, God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Mass today is being offered for the intentions of, St uh, of Tina Spiniello and a thanksgiving for the birthday of Marita de la Cruz. We pray. Stir up the will of your faithful, we pray, O Lord, that striving more eagerly to bring your divine work to fruitful completion, they may receive in greater measure the healing remedies your kindness bestows. We ask this for our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God, the second person of the Trinity, who lives and reigns with you, Father and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. When Elijah reached Horeb, the mountain of God, he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. 
the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat of Abel Meholah, as prophet in your place. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I long to see your face, O Lord. I long to see your face, O Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. I long to see your face, O Lord. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You who have been my help. I long to see your face, O Lord. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. I long to see your face, O Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. Shine on the world like bright stars. You are offering it the word of life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to the Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, you have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of unchastity, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. We continue to read from 1 Kings. We've arrived at chapter 19. The slaughter of her prophets and the miracle of the reign of fire infur infuriated Jezebel. As she has Elijah hunted down, he has to escape. And he escapes to a cave where he sits, depressed and puzzled. By this train of events. He has served God and done as he was told. Yet in the wake of God's victory, he is now a fugitive. Elijah is told to await the Lord's coming. A marvelous revelation comes to him at Horeb. He looks to the earthquake and fire, the exodus signs of God. But God was not in the terrible tremors of nature. Instead, God came in a gentle breeze, the spirit that lives in the prophet. Assured of God's presence, he is told to prepare a successor for himself and for King Ahab. God in the inner word, the gentle breeze, would bring a great revolution. Jesus reminds us in the gospel that through, although adultery, can destroy a marriage, lust in the heart or mind of a person can be just as devastating to the relationship. 
To preserve fidelity to a spouse or to God is not just a matter of what we do with our bodies. It also concerns what we do with our minds, feelings, and hearts. Just as God was present in the simple words of the prophet Elijah, so the power to create, preserve, or destroy a relationship is lodged inside ourselves. In other words, infidelity begins in the mind. A part of the role of God the Holy Spirit is to be that twinge in our consciences. If you were watching Chosen this past weekend, just as an aside, if you have not been watching Chosen, the Chosen series, why not? Why are you limiting yourself? Why are you choosing to limit yourself? Ask yourself the question, because again, we have uh, this is our final um, series, eighth episode on Sunday. I strongly recommend that you watch this. Do not limit yourself to one way of having God speak to you. The earthquake, the fire, the big you know, mass, Eucharist. People do this all the time. They choose to limit themselves, but more importantly, they're limiting God the Holy Spirit in them by saying to God, no, you have to come to me in this way. I refuse to do anything other than this. Only reading the Bible, only going to Mass. You can limit yourself in so many ways. So again, I would challenge you. If you have not been watching the Chosen series, which impresses me so much, and I don't impress easy, my bar for evangelization is incredibly high. And yet I'm impressed by this series. If you have not been watching the Chosen series, ask yourself seriously, why are you limiting God the Holy Spirit working in your life? Why? So, if you have been watching the Chosen series and you watched it this past weekend with us, episode 7, there is a great scene between Jesus and Nicodemus where Jesus tells Nicodemus that he has not come to deal with Rome. In other words, he has not come to, you know, a flame, a fire upon the Romans to destroy Rome. No. He has come to deal with sin. He says to Nicodemus, I did not come to deliver the people from Rome, but from sin, from spiritual death. He also says to Nicodemus in this magnificent episode where John 3.16 is discussed. The wind blows wherever it pleases, we read in John 3.8, just before John 3.16. And Jesus uses the analogy of the wind. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit, born again. It is incredibly important that we not limit ourselves, not limit God the Holy Spirit. This has been part of what I've attempted to do in the 50 days between Easter and Pentecost, to let you know that many Catholics have chosen to limit themselves to one way you really want to say to God, one way or the highway? The Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin. We read in John 16, 7 to 8. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, Jesus says, ascension. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. And if I go, I will send to you. And when he comes, 
comes, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Jesus did not come to condemn, but to save us from sin. Jesus says, whoever does not believe is condemned already. Again, be careful. Listen how God is inviting you to go deeper, further in your relationship with God, especially during this time of COVID. This is a time of great stress and anxiety for people. We're currently dealing with stress and anxiety as we seek to open up this church. It is important that we listen to God the Holy Spirit. As Jesus said very clearly, sin begins in the mind, not in the action. So again, I challenge you. We have put forth to you many programs over these 50 days between Easter and Pentecost. If you've chosen to partake in none of them, ask yourself, why not? Why are you choosing to be limited? Mass! Mass is the only way! That is not in the Bible. That is not part of the church teaching. That is not the Catholic way. Jesus is the way. He did not say Mass is the way. And there are many ways to come to know Jesus Christ, including the Chosen series. As part of opening up, we, this Sunday, are going to have Corpus Christi celebration, and half the Mass will be in Italian, so we will have a bilingual Mass this weekend. Please let, if you have Italian friends, know that that will be happening. La Messa questa domenica sarà bilingua, italiano e in inglese. Cerchiamo di prepararci per aprire la chiesa. In, pre in preparazione uh, facciamo questa messa bilingua, in particolare che è la grande festa di Corpus Christi. Also, and I'll be mentioning this at every Mass, don't get annoyed with me, it's not me, it's the government. They're mandating us to perform certain functions when people come in, after people come in, after they're seated. I need volunteers. Again, you know, I need more volunteers than I currently have. If you are concerned about being protected from COVID, we will be having dialogue about all of that. Every church is doing this, the Muslim church, the Hindu church, the Jewish church, the Christian church. All the churches require volunteers. Right now, I do not have enough volunteers. And it is important that you open yourself up, again, don't limit yourself, to volunteerism during this time. It is mandated by the government. If I don't have enough volunteers to meet the government requirements, there will be consequences. What those consequences are is kind of obvious. Use your imagination. Either it requires me to pay people to come here to do this work, or it may even delay our opening. I have to meet the government requirements. Therefore, I need people to help me meet those government requirements. Please take that seriously, because the government is not fooling around. They have mandated requirements. If I don't have enough volunteers, there will be consequences in all churches. So all pastors are making this request, not just me. I know because I'm part of a pre-support group and they're all pushing their parishioners hard to volunteer. We know there is concern. We know there's fear. 
We know their questions. As soon as we have clear guidelines from the Archdiocese of Toronto, we will let you know how to deal with those fears and concerns, and we'll try to alleviate any anxiety that there is. But notwithstanding, the government requirements have to be met, and in order to meet them, I need volunteers. That's why I'm pushing you extra hard in this respect. That's the reality of what I have to do as the pastor now that we are in the process of opening up. Also, we would appreciate donations of sanitizer and gloves and masks. If you call the office, they'll know, let you know where you can drop them off. Again, don't limit yourself in any way. That is the only way to grow as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Jesus sets the bar incredibly high. We are expected to set that bar incredibly high. Again, Elijah realized it isn't the big thing. Sometimes it's a little gesture, an ability to volunteer. For a period of time, an ability to offer one's time and talent. Those little things can make an incredible difference in our lives, in how we serve God and how we deal with one another. Again, as I noted at earlier Masses, be careful of pre existing conditions and being in the high risk category. Again, volunteer. The little things matter, especially now. God bless you all. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. The mystery of this one and wine we make to share in the unity of Christ and give himself to share in our humanity. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the sacred offerings which at your bidding we dedicate to your name, and in order that through these gifts we may become worthy of your love, grant us unfailing obedience to your commands. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we now acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Tom Collins, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. In a special way, John Francis de Rule, Margaret Sammy, Tanino Mio, Benjamin Kalimag, Blair Thomas, Thomas Maria Antony, and Corazon de los Angeles. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. The blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, fill me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Suffer me not to be separated from you. From the malicious enemy, defend me. At the hour of my death, call me, and bid me come to you, that with your saints I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray one Hail Mary for all who are sick and for those who care for them. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that those to whom you give the joy of participating in divine mysteries may never be parted from you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, and we may be worthy of the promises of God. 